Welcome to Lake Chilika, India's largest coastal lagoon and a vital wetland. It is home to various fish species and many migratory birds, and it supports thousands of families. However, Chilika faces challenges that need careful management and fair solutions. The Chilika Lagoon Field Visit has proven to be an interesting and eye-opening one which exposed various successes and challenges in ensuring the balance between conserving nature and protecting community livelihoods. This is enabled by a healthy relationship between people and Conservation Landscapes Authority. We will be discussing three broad themes identified from interactions with some of the communities surrounding the Chalika Lagoon. On conservation, on the central part of the Chalika Lagoon, we observed forms of conservation practiced using the most common methods, which are based on mainstream approach that restricts access to landscapes and has consequences such as three to seven years imprisonment or 10,000 rupees fine if found inside the territory. While on the northern part of the Chalika Lagoon, we have witnessed a form of conservation where community members are part of the conservation effort and even use the waterscapes as a route to reach the Chilika Lagoon for fishing. This site is also where the community was part of the establishing of the ecotourism center with not much conflict between community and the authority. This has pushed our group to think about whether more culturally considerate and inclusive forms of conservation could be the future of conservation which ensure the protection of nature and livelihood, therefore creating a balanced and sustainable environment for the success of conservation to exist with the success of community livelihoods. Commons, contestations and justice. Moving to communities on other parts of the Chilika Lagoon, such as the Ganjam community, we learnt of the Coastal Regulation Zone, CRZ policy, this is a central government regulation which maps out coastal landscapes where no industrialization and development is allowed. We also witnessed community initiatives where the community came together to locate and map resources which are important to them and their livelihoods. When asking why, communities shared that there have been previous experiences where external companies have attempted to use their commons for industrial purposes hence the need for self-driven mapping. We then got into a discussion which led to the question exploring whether participatory mapping could be used as a tool against injustice to prevent any future conflict and possible impacts on community livelihoods and what are the possible avenues which can be taken to ensure this. Infrastructure. On our visit to the Balugang fishing market, at first glance, this showed a picture of a sophisticated trading environment where fishers, traders and other stakeholders have access to use these spaces for their businesses. However, in further conversations, we notice that this is dependent on accessibility. In our visit to some fishing villages, we also noticed dry taps which showed inadequate drinking water facilities in fishing villages, as well as an unequal allocation of housing infrastructure, which led to most fishers not having adequate housing after being affected by the cyclone. The question that animates our engagement is, could Chilika be viewed as an assemblage of multiple socio-ecological relations that entail elements for the move from vulnerability to viability? And what is the position of blue justice in this move? And we invite all of you to join us in this reflective journey. <laughs>